Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Fighting for the future. Ten years later, we're getting a closer look at Detroit's financial rebirth since bankruptcy. Good to have you with us here on this Monday afternoon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe. The city's recovery has taken time, but today marks an historic achievement in the ongoing comeback. Yes, it is. Let's get to Rod Maloney. He joins us now live with what's happened and how it will impact future growth. Well, Rhonda, Jason, you know, this is one of those uh, stories that, uh, you know, since I was here back in 2013 for the bankruptcy, you could say that this is the victory lap the city's been waiting for. Now, I've got a bottle of ink here, right? That's what that is. It's a bottle of black ink. And that's what they handed out at today's press conference because they're so proud of the fact that a city that had been floating in red ink for many, many years uh, has recovered and rather smartly. Now, let's hear, well, first of all, before we do the, uh, do the quote from Moody's, um, they're at BAA2, which most people don't understand what that means. But that's an investment rating, investment grade bond rating that they can borrow at, uh, at, at less expensive rates. It's sort of like your credit car card interest rate. And that's uh, dropping. Now, 10 years ago, it was CAA3, 10 points below where they are now. Making this most remarkable, though, is that they didn't just go up one. They went up two ratings, which doesn't happen very often. And it's a, it's a rather impressive achievement for the city. Now, here's what Moody said. It said the city's financial ratios are robust, a word you don't often hear from investment services, after a decade of solid financial performances, especially when it comes to the city of Detroit. City management has adhered to strong governance practices, and Moody's expectation is that such momentum will continue. So let's hear from Mayor Mike Duggan taking his victory lap, talking about what they were able to achieve and why. We have to thank the businesses that made this possible. We are in the situation we are in uh, because the income tax revenues have exceeded uh, everyone's expectations. Jeep plant was huge. What Ford is doing at the train station, what General Motors has done uh, at Factory Zero and the parts suppliers, what Amazon has done, what Dan Gilbert and Chris Illich and Gary Torgo have done in improving office buildings and housing and moving people in, and what City Council has done in having the courage to approve every one of those projects, all of those things together made this possible. Now, the mayor also said that he expects Moody's to give the city another upgrade here in the days ahead, maybe in the next year or so. Uh, but it is a remarkable comeback. And in fact, I talked to uh, uh, Doug Bernstein, our bankruptcy expert, and he basically said that the city being able to borrow money at lesser expense is very important. He says, but more than anything, there was the expectation after the bankruptcy that the city would kind of limp along in the years ahead. But the city has actually pros prospered quite smartly, quite uh, impressively, actually. And so we'll be talking more about this coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting live downtown, Rod Maloney, Local 4. It is a very impressive comeback for sure. Thank you, Rod. He was just trying to break up an argument between a man and a woman and ends up getting shot. This happened in Ann Arbor, North Main and East Ann Street. But the victim was able to drive to a parking lot on East Huron and North Division. And this all happened less than a half a mile from the campus of the University of Michigan. The man was injured and taken to a nearby hospital, and he is expected to be okay. Two Men saw the aftermath from their apartment above the scene. Police are still looking for the gunman. Charges are expected this week in the killing of a pregnant woman in Sterling Heights. Police were called to do a welfare check inside an apartment on 18 Mile Road in Van Dyke around 3 a.m. Sunday. Blood was found at the apartment, but no one inside. Later in Clinton Township, police responded to a call about a man covered in blood and arrested him. Investigators also found a 30 year old pregnant woman who'd been stabbed several times. Both she and her unborn child died a short time later at a hospital. State police say a woman who turned out to be high on marijuana jumped out of a car on the I-96 freeway Sunday. They say the woman jumped out of a ride share because she thought she was being kidnapped. The woman told police she was headed to Detroit, but then saw a sign that said Port Huron and panicked, thinking the driver was taking her somewhere else. Fortunately, nobody seriously hurt in that. 
There is a new bus service that you want to tell all your friends and neighbors about. It's offering riders a direct route to and from Detroit's Metro Airport in downtown Detroit for less than $10 one way. There it is. The Detroit Air Express, also known as DAX, it's launched today and is the first public bus service to offer Detroiters this direct shuttle to the airport. Our pre man talked to potential riders about what this new route means for the city. I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, it's affordable, um, and it seems like if it's getting people to where they need to be, it works. I think it's fantastic to give people an opportunity to get from Detroit down to the airport, you know, uh, in, a, in a reasonably priced manner. So, what are some of the challenges right now, just getting to Metro Airport? Uh, I would say, you know, just construction uh, and, and whatnot. Going down the expressways is kind of uh, a pain right now. This morning on the morning show, Priya actually took a live ride out to the airport and talked to the people on the bus that were taking it for the first time, and they, they called it, hey, a smart decision for people, right? Riders can catch the bus between 3.30 and 11 p.m. every day, 3.30 a.m. Uh, the DAX will make 16 round trips a day. You can board the bus right there across from the Westin on Washington, uh, Michigan Avenue State Street there, and the DAX can drop people off at both terminals. Michigan State plans to start renovating the MSU Union and Berkey Hall. Parts of those buildings have been closed since the shooting in February of last year where three students were killed. Work is set to begin at the MSU Union today. Berkey Hall, that work will start next week. The former food court area of the MSU Union will be updated and some classrooms at Berkey Hall will become gathering spaces. Renovations on both should be finished by the fall. If your travel plans will take you across the Mackinac Bridge in the coming weeks, it might be a slow go. A two-month repaving project gets underway on the bridge today. Traffic going to be cut down to one lane each way and will stay that way until at least late May. Uh, officials hoping to have all the work done by Memorial Day. That would be unfortunate if it isn't, yeah, right? Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> Ooh, the unofficial start of the summer travel period. Yes, a lot of folks will want to make it over the bridge and not take the entire weekend to get to the other side. <laughs> that would be a bummer. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the weather, Ashley. Temperatures warming up this week. Yeah, we're already starting to see that improvement as we take a live look at Metro Airport, where we sit at 48 degrees, but we have hit 50 in Ann Arbor, 47 in Lapeer, 51 in Monroe and we have a southeasterly breeze out there really between about 10 to 15 miles per hour across the area. So a little breezy. We can see some gusts around 25 miles per hour today, but the gustier stuff that arrives tomorrow. So it's going to stay rather breezy for the next two days. Mostly cloudy and mild though. 58 the forecasted high and we could see a couple spots hit 60 today, but this is what we're keeping our eye on. This system that's off to the west that's bringing winter storms to portions of the upper Midwest and the plains. And then we have this attached front as that sweeps through the region tomorrow. We are going to have a chance for some strong to severe storms. But as of right now, some of that rain has developed off of Lake Michigan. We should spend the rest of the day pretty much dry. Some of that moisture here in southeastern Michigan, just in the cloud cover. So above average starts the week and windy, but we're going to time out two waves of showers and storms for your Tuesday coming up.